So you are looking for a new job as a student or as an employee or you are unemployed and I'm going to help you how to optimize LinkedIn to get a new job offer and to find a new job or your dream job, okay? And this question was asked by Johnny, who's also part of our self-dev community. And I did a lot of research on LinkedIn and I also tried a lot. And um, the result was very interesting and very um, insightful as well. That's why um, I think as a data person, I can give you a lot of insights which can improve your visibility, okay? And the first thing you need to understand is that LinkedIn is a search engine, exactly like YouTube and Google. Uh, it's just disguised as, you know, like this social platform, which looks very cool. And um, the next part is that it's very serious, right? So uh, I prepared um, a checklist for you, which you also just can go through by yourself at the end of that one, but we'll go, just go through all of that. And I will take like my profile as an example and then share some uh, experiences which I made while I, exp um, not, no, while I updated my profile actually from time to time. And then I will go through some profiles from our community members so we can see what we can improve, okay? And now let's just start with the search engine again, because you know, um, you are, a student and you're looking for a job and normally you go on Glassdoor or you go on, I don't know, what are those pages called? Um, Thing or is it Kununu as well in Germany maybe? Yeah, but um, most people don't believe in LinkedIn or they don't have it on their um, screen, you know, because they think, yeah, it's something just for um, business owners, entrepreneurs or something like that. But if you think about that and if you understand what kind of people are on LinkedIn, actually, you you will see that it's a huge network of people and um, the numbers are quite high that I think now in 2022, um, there are about more than 60 million companies on LinkedIn and over probably more than 90 million users now on LinkedIn, right? So that's how you already can tell that you could use that as a free search engine to optimize your profile and be more visible on the internet because imagine you have your own um, portfolio page or something then you have to optimize your whole page and uh, conflict the whole SEO like the search engine optimization on Google just to be visible right but why should you do that if LinkedIn already is doing that for you and it's quite easy like super easy to get um, more people on your profile and now let's just start with the checklist so here you can see my LinkedIn first, but let's go to the checklist quickly, which I have here. I hope it's big enough for you. Um, so the first question you have to ask yourself is, what do you even want on LinkedIn, right? Because it's a networking platform and you can do a lot of different things here, but I think most people want to get a new job or network with other people because sometimes you go on profiles and then you, you see they have like hundreds of or thousands of connections and then LinkedIn just uh, shorts it uh, by saying over 500 connections, right? So that's uh, one advantage of LinkedIn. But the first question is what do you want and who are you, right? So it's like uh, some kind of uh, self-reflection because if you don't know what you want, how do you know what you are looking for? That's why ask yourself, what do you want? What kind of job are you looking for? And in what kind of field do you want to work, right? Like, let's take uh, data as an, uh, as an example. So do you want to be a data engineer, a data scientist, data an analyst, or DevOps or data ops? I don't know, you know? Ask yourself if you know the differences and then uh, just write down what you actually are looking for. And now maybe also consider the level. Like, do you want to start like, as an intern, junior, senior, or I don't know, anything like that. So that's something which you have to ask yourself or join a community and talk with those people so they can give, give you some insights. Then the next step is you need to have a serious profile picture, right? So in this case, I have this one. I would say it's not that serious, you know, but Back then, I had this profile picture because I branded myself as a business owner and 
I I could do whatever I want, right? I mean, there also are people who have very fancy profile pictures, but they are creatives or head of design, head of, uh, I don't know, um, marketing. That's why it, it also has to be flashy a little bit, right? But if you are optimizing your profile, consider that you need to take a picture which actually looks kind of serious, which means you're not wearing a hoodie or something, you know, like something like, like um, a casual or business casual shirt or um, suit, I don't know and don't wear a cap like like this one <laughs> on your profile picture so that's one example and maybe also smile a little bit right so don't don't look like a grumpy cat like this 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 is <laughs> everybody likes people who smile right so that's the next part then um i think i should put this on top actually which is the beginning so first of all, of course, your name, because I'm not going to explain to you how LinkedIn works or something like that. It's just like I, I assume you know how LinkedIn is um, structured and this is your profile and you can uh, config all of that. But I will get to, to this one and we will start with the first um, sections here, which is your headline. And everybody will have like their name, right? So you can write, of course, your full name. And if you don't want to get um, found by other people, you also can configure that they won't see your full name. I just uh, removed my full name here and uh, replace it with a P because long P sounds very serious. <laughs> and um, yeah, so first of all, have a real name, right? And then you will have a headline, which is this line below. And if you uh, know Instagram, you also have this headline on Instagram, like which is your bio. So this whole section is your biography where you can write a lot of um, like a summary about yourself already. And that's like something which most people don't have, right? So as you can see here in my example, I said, I'm a data engineer. And then I listed the most used tech stack which I use as in, in my headline, which is Python, SQL, and GCP, which is actually Google Cloud Platform. And then I also just mentioned I'm a community builder or I built a community, which is more relevant for content creation, something like that. But for your case, you should write something else. And also, um, in my case, you can see I, I don't have um, any kind of year or when I uh, where I say I graduated and th then and here. But if you are a student and you want to um, look for a full time job, then it's uh, I advise you to write that you say I will graduate in year 2024 20, or something like that. So people actually know you are a student and you're looking for a full time job then because most people will look for working students and then they uh, they will like incubate them and uh, help them to grow and maybe or hope that they can turn into full time employees right so remember write down what you actually are doing so your your, your job um, your your title and don't be um how do you say it um have some confidence you know you have to you, you brand yourself a little bit more than you are, but don't lie to that, right? Because if you, let's say you are learning Python, you don't have a job title yet, you can just say, um, I'm learning Python to automate it or to build digital solutions, something like that. But just don't say Python developer because Python developer is so basic. Nobody knows what you're doing because Python is, you can do so much more with Python, right? You can build web apps, you can do, um, data visualizations, you can automate or, or, or scrape data, anything like that, or just to, to use it to build um, DevOps or something like that. So everything is possible. So have some details in your headline and use buzzwords of your technology, which you are using because here's the thing, recruiters have tools where they just look for keywords on LinkedIn on your page and then they will have a, like a ranking if you have all those uh, keywords or not. And then they can consider you uh, to, to click on your profile or not, right? That's why have as many keywords as possible, which are relevant to you. And then the next part, which you can see here is this gray um, line, which is like the sub headline. And here you can see it says, 
talks about automation, data analytics and data engineering. And this is like a very hidden special part which you can unlock if you scroll down on your profile and click on creator mode. And if you do that, you can uh, um, add more details and have this headline here. And then you can add some hashtags or keywords where people also can um, know you or associate you with. And in my case, I just added it with automation, data analytics and data engineering because that's what I'm doing. And before that, like half a year before, I had NFT, Web3, all of that stuff because I really was interested in that field. But now it's back into automation and data analytics actually with data engineering. Okay, then the next part is, of course, uh, just at your location because many people are looking for um, students or uh, employees in a specific region in, in a city or something, right? So that also can help you. Then the next part is this part here down below, which basically is a flag which tells the recruiters if you are open and are looking for new jobs. And don't worry, of course, it is private, so only recruiters will see that. And also, if you have a recruiter in your own company, they won't see that. But even if they see that, there's no issue with that. And if, let's say you have a job right now and you have this um, section opened, right? There's no problem with that. If your boss comes to you and tells you, Long, what is that, man? Why are you looking for a new job? then he's not the right boss. And then this boss has some kind of issues or anxiety or something, I, I guess, because um, if your boss is treating you correct, then he shouldn't uh, fear that you go or something, right? But because why should I not be open to get new opportunities or new challenges or new or uh, increase in salary, right? Why not? That's why turn it on so people can see you and increase you increase your chance that they actually talk to you okay so let's just do a summary headline at a lot of um, keywords which are relevant for your job which you're looking for and also define yourself in this case i have data engineer because it's, it's very clear what that actually is but i also could say i specialize in automation with tool x y z or something like that but i'm not looking for a a new job right now that's why i just leave it like that but if i would be looking for a job you can see that in my profile actually so let's go back to the um checklist okay so boost your headline that's what we did and also keywords for seal but it's not done yet and then open up this tag um i think there is something which is called um open for new jobs or something like here you see and then you can turn it on then the next part is um, here down below um, the activity section, which basically is just like your, um, your feed, like on Facebook and Instagram, where people can see what you were posting or not. Because if you really want to be seen, right, then you need to write posts about something. But actually, for the beginning, you don't need to do that. It's not, it's not, it's, it's not essential, it's, it's just optional because it can increase more, right? Because if, let's say you are looking for a job in Python or something like that, then you can just write um, a very short blog article about what you have learned or what you found out or something. And people can just sh see it and they see you are doing something. So it's like credibility, a proof of credibility, but you don't need to do that. Then the next part, which is like, one of the most important parts here is your about section. If you don't have it activated now, activate it and edit it. And here you can see my part, which is like a huge essay about myself, which you can see uh, like just like that, right? So I just have like a very simple uh, one line pitch about me. So I say I'm a data engineer by day and I do co-working streams and uh, I'm a content creator by night. So people already know I do this and that. And that's what I also mentioned in my previous video. So you need to be aware of what are you? What do you do, right? You need to be aware of yourself. And then you need to write a very short summary about yourself. And here again, you need to understand the keywords which the job you're looking for has, okay? 
In this case, let's say I'm looking for a job as a data engineer or data scientist. In this case, I need to write or I should write about the projects which I'm working on. So it's basically, it's like the, the space where you can write your, what is it called? Your um, letter of application. I think in German it's called your Anschreiben. What, what is Anschreiben in, in English? Anschreiben dict. It's called uh, cover note. Yeah, cover letter. I think cover letter. So that's basically your cover letter. Oops. And here you basically just write what you are working on right now, what challenges you have, or what kind of solutions you provided, right? So I wrote, currently I'm working as an automation specialist and a data engineer building scalable data pipelines, streaming and manipulating millions of data sources and automation tools to digitize and automate core process processes in the world of real estate and social media. So I said what my niche is and what kind of size I work with of data, right? And then I, I also just mentioned more about what I do in my free time, just to add more keywords as well. So you see extracting data, NFTs, YouTube, NLP, which is uh, natural language processing, which is relevant for um, data science actually. So you see, I just wrote some text about myself and tried to add some kind of story into it, right? And then what you should do definitely is to add this part here. Super important because remember, LinkedIn is a search engine. Write a lot of keywords into that because imagine the recruiter comes on your profile, they just click on scan and this scan tool is just scanning through his keyword list, which he's looking for. Like, let's say he has Python, AWS, uh, database, uh, MongoDB, uh, Redis, or something like that, and um, I don't know, Docker. And then he will just see if you have it on your page or not. And if you have zero hits, you're gone, right? And that's why add your keywords here. And I just created this part where I said, my favorite development environment, which means I know more but this is what I like to use the most. So I wrote tech stack, which is Python, PostgreSQL, MongoDB, blah, 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 and so on. And then I just added project management, which is Scrum, because um, in um, tech jobs, you have a lot of different project management uh, principles and uh, the most, uh, or the, the one which I like the most is called Scrum. Which, that's why I wrote, wrote it here. Then I also mentioned my IDEs, which I really like, and the OS. But of course, I also use Windows. I could write that here, would be no problem. Then here, look at this. I just wrote hashtags and all the stuff which I didn't edit here on top, which is, for example, BigQuery, PubSub, Shell, containerization, blockchain, all that stuff. So people actually can hit that keyword on my profile, okay? So that's what I said with keywords for SEO, like search engine optimization. And the next one here on my LinkedIn checklist is your elevator pitch, which basically is a combination of your first part here, which is your profile, um, and also this part here, like the first sentence or the, this, the first paragraph. So you basically pitch yourself to other people. Like, if you don't know, I also have this video, which I will link here somewhere, which is called um, Elevator Pitch in 12 Seconds or something, which I really recommend to watch if you are serious about um, figuring out who you are, what you want to do, and where you actually want to go. So, let's continue. Um, I have the skills section here, actually, but I think the next part is the LinkedIn CV resume resume part or aka the experiences and now this is another section and possibility to add more keywords it's always the same so first of all i will just go down here and you see i have what is that i have um that many um yeah stages in my career and what you should see is that um, the very early ones, I didn't put so much um, focus on them, but let's say I started here, which is more relevant, the full stack web developer. Then you should add details 
what you did in this job. So just don't don't say I uh, used LAMP stack and PHP like I did here because um, they care about solutions. And here I didn't put much effort in. I just wanted to add some keywords because I'm not into web development anymore. That's why I, I didn't care about that. I just wanted to show I work with them. But you see, I dropped some um, keywords here again, but I didn't care about that. That's why it doesn't matter. Here again, tech stack. And then I, I wrote what I did with that. I could have um, written more, but you will see the difference up um, in the early stages. Here I did the same. I just did some front end work, ba ba bum. Again, keywords. Then here's the part, because this is actually my own company, e-commerce business owner. I've been doing it for five years and seven months. And I just call the role which I have in my company because I do it with multiple uh, friends. I call it the business intelligence developer or data analyst for a, a development. And here's what I did. Some recent notable contributions. Reaching bestseller rank number one on Amazon for the top selling product. So that's what I did because uh, I did some data analytics, whatever that is. And here I said increasing the sales by applying simple pattern detection and automation. So you see, I provide solutions or impact which I had on the company. And that's what people actually care. And that's also what you should write in your uh, cover letter when you apply for companies. But if you go down this path with LinkedIn and uh, talking with recruiters, you probably won't have to do that anymore. Okay. And then look at this, responsible for core business tasks, building automation software, saving up to 90% of the actual workload. That means my, my friends or my colleagues didn't have to work anymore because I automated all of that, right? And then you can add a lot of details here, but it's more about showing off your impact and then also again, dropping new keywords. So then of course, you could, I should do that for my current job as well. But as you know, I'm not looking for a new job or something like that. That's why I just left it like that. But at one point I will um, improve that. And then I would say something like that. Um, I worked with X amount of data. I built microservices to solve this pro uh, problem, or I built this and that data warehouse with this schema, I work with this data uh, database or whatever that is, right? Or I manage this kind uh, of team to work on those projects, blah, blah, blah. Or I mentioned some kind of revenue, something like that, all that stuff. Let me just check out um, the chat. Maybe you're writing something just so I, I don't miss it. Okay, okay, no message, good, good. So that's your experience part. And now here's the thing, if you don't have any experience, just say that you are learning something or you're like working on some projects which you can add, I think somewhere down below. I don't know. I think I don't have it here because it's my experience part. But yeah, you can also write something like here. Wait, let me check it out. Um, wait, where is it? Ah, here, look at this. Um, so this was your experience part. And then you have your education part where you also just should say <laughs> what kind of education you have. So I have a Bachelor of Engineering in Computer Engineering at the Berlin University of Applied Science. And then here's what I did. I was volunteering as a developer and project manager at um, a project which is called Das Baumhaus. So that's something which you also could write about yourself because Marvin, for example, is contributing to a lot of open source projects. And that's the point where he can mention all of that, right? And here I said, I was the, uh, with my team, the winner of the competition of Mensch und Technik 2016 of the VDI, Verein Deutsche Ingenieure, and we won a competition, blah, blah, blah. So it also is some kind of um, credibility again. So they know you are doing something. That's where you can do that. And then of course, here's the last part, your skill, skill section. So let's go here. So I missed this and skill section is comes now. So here is what you actually should mention all the skills, but don't overdo it. Just write uh, like the, the basic skills, which you need for your role, which you're looking for. In this case, I have, for example, e-commerce, because back then I was known for e-commerce and people networked with me because I talked with them about 
um, Amazon sh um, shopping marketplaces, eBay marketplaces, and I showed them how they could do specific things to save time or just to, to optimize their sales or whatever that is, right? And then the next one is data analysis and Python, and then people can endorse you for that, and then you get endorsements. And that's why use your network and return it to people. If, if you talk with Marvin, for example, now we have Johnny and Marvin here, and you know, Marvin is really good in Flutter and mobile development. Then Johnny, go and give him an, a, or endorse him for Flutter or whatever it is because you know that, right? And also vice versa, do it and ask your network to do that. So it, it gives you some kind of proof and credibility as well. And then you see, I, I also have 44 other skills, but who cares, man? <laughs> Just the search engine. Then do the same with recommendations, but um, it's not that uh, relevant, but here you can see I gave Sam one which uh, who I um, had some um, contact with re who I really liked. And yeah, then you have some interests which also can follow, like it's some, some kind of group which you can follow on LinkedIn. And yeah, that's basically it actually. And um, I hope that gave you some kind of insights how you can do all of that. And then I asked Johnny or Marvin or Aunt Marvin to send me some of their, or like not some, <laughs> their profile. So I can actually scan them and tell them what they could improve. So let's see, I will just start with the profile from Johnny, which you can see here on top. So what do we have here? This is Johnny, are we even connected? I, I think we are not connected, uh, which is no problem. So you see Johnny is here and you can config actually that people who are not connected with you ca can't see your profile picture, which is also fine, you know, which is no no problem because people shouldn't uh, not should not hire you or shouldn't hire you based on your appearance, right? So that's not not a big deal. But if you want uh, add a new profile picture and a banner, of course, as you remember, I also had this banner, which is just self dev. So people actually see, okay, this is some kind of self development or something, but it, it, it has some kind of techy look. And then we can see what you are doing here. So it says you are in Ausbildung. So you are, you are still studying and do that, but that's something which you could change and say uh, you are learning a specific language and you're graduating then and then and you're looking for this job or you're focusing on Python or whatever that is, right? And also guys, don't worry about the connections. If you just have one connection, it doesn't matter. You also just can send out connections to all of the people. So you have like 50 or 100 connections, then it's totally fine, you know? Because I also just have like 289 connections because I, I don't, uh, no, here, 199 because I don't accept all those connections which I get because you get a lot of connections actually. And then um, here again, con um, education and also where's the other part, the about part, you see, it's not even visible here. That's why go turn it on and look up what you can write. Take my stuff as a template and adapt it to yours and then you're good to go. And uh, what else do we have? Of course, yeah, this part here is your, your experiences, just um, add them here as well because you know you don't have that yet so just um, add it and this profile basically just looks like it, it nobody hasn't or haven't um, edited it yet so that's why no problem but I'm telling you if you do that 100% people will text you and say hey Johnny man I see you're using Python are you interested in this working student job and with the possibility to get full-time hard after your um, you study, that's what, that's what will happen. And that's what's happening to all of my friends who are doing what I did they should do. Like I had one friend who was um, working as a working student and uh, they wanted to change the job. I said, go on LinkedIn, adapt it, I helped you. 10 minutes, we were done. Then they said, man, I, I already got like five offers and now they're working at a job which pays them more than they got back then. Right, so that's the story and that's the motivation for you. Now let's go and cover some questions which you guys have. So, um, this is Discord by the way guys. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, let's, let's do it like that. What is this man? So, we have the first question. 
What's the fine line of overselling and underselling on LinkedIn? Asked by Johnny, which is a really great question because you shouldn't, or like, like what does it mean? It means to me that you shouldn't um, sell yourself uh, or put yourself in a light which is not the true person who you are, right? So don't lie about your skills because basically every person could write, I worked at Facebook and at Amazon and I did this and that, blah, 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 blah. Nobody will check that, right? Unless they have connections there. But the moment your lie will um, break down like a cookie is when you talk to a recruiter and then the recruiter um, forwards you to the real recruiter of Amazon, for example, and then they ask you questions like, okay, what is the difference between, um, I don't know, like Postgres and MongoDB and why would you use this and that for that one and you can't answer that question, then you have a really bad time. That's why don't lie about your skills, just say what you actually are confident about. Right? But I know if you're a beginner, then you probably don't have uh, uh, like a lot of confidence in, in your skills. But that's why I'm telling you, talk with other people from communities like our self-life community here. And then they can help you to build some kind of self-esteem and kind of benchmark your skills and let you know what you actually can do and what you can't do. Right? So that's my take on that one and also don't sell yourself or like don't under, undersell yourself don't say oh yeah i just uh, started learning python for two months that's why i'm still a noob you know of course yes it makes sense because you just started right but let's say you studied python for two months but you invested eight hours per day that's like a huge number Compared to somebody who said, oh yeah, I studied Python for two months, but they just invested two hours per week into that. Then of course you are way better than that one. And the more you do, the better you will become and the better you will feel. Okay, so don't feel like you don't know anything. Because just look at what you're building and what, how, you, how far you came from the beginning. So that's my take on that journey. So I hope that answered your question and the next one is from Julio Julio what should I probably <laughs> what should I probably not include on my LinkedIn um, great question I think you shouldn't um, add something like uh, my expected salary is this and that so I think um, when you want to talk about salary it's something which you do with your recruiter or with your or you negotiate with them uh, in the car or whatever that is. Uh, wait, let me get the question again. Um, yeah, I think that's one thing. Um, I think you you should not lie. So that's another part. All right, let me go back to the screen. Um, what else should you not include? Um, I think you also should not include some kind of personal issues. So for example, let's say you got fired in your, in your last job because you uh, overslept seven times, right? Seven times, man. Normal bosses fire you after four times or three times, right? So, but if you manage seven times, don't say, yeah, I got fired uh, because I overslept seven times and that's why I'm looking for a new job. That's what you don't do. You have to put it into a different wrapping paper, you know? <laughs> you have to say, yeah, th the distance to my work or like the, the, the way to my work was different and they didn't allow working from home or something like that. That's why that was the problem, right? So you have to tell the story different. But of, of course, don't lie. And if you overslept seven times, man, change that. Don't oversleep, man. <laughs> so that's one thing you shouldn't say. And also personal issues. Don't say, uh, I didn't like to work with person X and Y because of those reasons, blah, blah, blah. Just stay very serious and um, authentic don't make it emotional and yeah that's what i would suggest not to put on linkedin i hope that um gives you some kind of answer on your question blazer um, also if you have questions now guys now you can talk but let me just continue with this life hack a lot of people accept these connections even if you don't know them even ceos 
Yes, exactly. That's uh, Marvin is referring to send out connections because the more the connections you have, the more you can uh, connect with other people because on LinkedIn, it works like that. Let's say I'm here and I want to connect with um, Blazor and Blazor is the CTO of, I don't know, self-dev company or something like that. And he configured in his settings, I don't accept any connection request from people who I don't know or who don't have any connections with any of my connections. And I, let's say I don't know anybody who's connected to Blazor, so I can't send him an invitation and I will never be able to talk to him. But if I have any person, a random person who is connected with Blazor, boom, I can send him a connection request. I got him done. Then I can text him or I can see his activity feed and see what he's commenting on. And then I'm like, oh, he's commenting about um, Flutter uh, issues, which I solved. Boom, I text on that uh, comment, which he had. And then he sees it like, oh, who's Blazor? And then he's like, oh, Blazor's a Flutter developer. He's uh, creating digital solutions to improve productivity, blah, 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 blah. Oh, wow. Okay. This guy he knows something and then he connects with him and the CEO suddenly is like, oh man, do you want to become my CTO, blah, blah, blah. And then boom, you got a new job, right? So that's the secret, the, the juice which Marvin is dropping here. So let's go back to the next one. I'm hiding my LinkedIn from people because I'm shy, trying to stay private, but I want to get hard at the same time. What do I do? Um, what does it mean you're hiding your LinkedIn from people? I mean... Uh, maybe it's your name. That's why I'm telling you. You, I mean, let's say my name is Long and I'm shy, but I want to be visible. So I don't call myself Long, but I self my uh, call myself not Long. Very creative. But yeah, you get it. You get, just can have another name. And then if if you get to the stage where you can talk with the recruiter and all the stuff, right? Then you just tell them, yeah, by the way, just just up front, my name is not Tenect. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And then they are like, yeah, no worries, man. I totally understand that, you know? So there's no big issue about that. So I, I would suggest this one. So uh, the next question, how do you know if the recruiter is a good one or not? Like, how do you know their interest is serious? Oh, that's a really good one because I talk with so many recruiters, man. And the first thing is, that, uh, for example, I have this one recruiter who totally understands me and he always calls me just to check in with me, you know, but he's, he's not calling me just to, to check, hey, do you want a new job? Because if I uh, get you hired, I get some kind of uh, commission, you know, so you can tell by the way they talk and if they actually want to get in touch with you, right? So let's say somebody calls you and, and this person is like, uh, hey, man. I have a new job offer for you. Are you interested? Oh, yeah. Uh, can you uh, send me? Okay, shut up. So this is a job. This is a salary. This is what I need. Are you interested? Oh, yeah, man. Let this, uh, let's this. let do an, another call, man. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's amazing. And uh, do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, shut up. I will call you again. So that's something <laughs> which, is, which happened to me. And I'm like, man, he didn't even listen to me. <laughs> and that's why I was like, this is a bad one, but somebody who really asks you, hey, Long, are you happy at your company? Okay, you're happy, but are you looking for a new challenge, right? Just asking if you're uh, interested in new challenges doesn't mean you want to change your job, right? But let's say, um, do you want more salary? And let's say I happen, to, I happen to want more salary, then they say, okay, look, we have this offer in this company, and they offer, I don't know, 20% more, and they exactly do this, uh, use the same tech stack. Then you could listen to them and hear and see if that fits. And then, okay, let's say you um, are interested and they still talk more about you and then they give you time. Yeah, let's talk again in two days, next week or something. Or you say, yeah, listen, I, I still have like two other um, interviews, but I, I'm at the last stage. 
And then they, they tell you, oh, no worries, man. I will speed it up for you then. And then you can tell if it's a good or bad recruiter if they come back to you tomorrow again, you know, because if they like you and they understand or they want you because they believe the job fits you, then he's a good recruiter, right? So listen to how fast they are talking if they actually talk with you about the job and not about the job with you, you know, because you see, Recruiters only want um, uh, to map the client with the uh, employee, <laughs> like that. So um, that's what they want. And um, some people will become your friends as well. Like I have some recruiters who are my friends now, you know, like uh, I just talk to them. And I, I also help them to find other um, um Yeah, working students or full-time employees because uh, my friends sometimes are looking for jobs and then I just recommend them and that's it, nothing more because I know this recruiter is genuine and he really wants to help. Boom, I get it, that's it. Okay, so I hope that um, answers your question, Johnny. So consider how they talk to you and if they actually are interested in your own thoughts and if they ask the right questions, right? That's the thing. Um, Blazer is asking, how important is it to reply to recruiters when they reach out? And how should I conduct yourself with re recruiters? Very good question. I absolutely love that. Because you know, search engine. LinkedIn equals search engine. LinkedIn can see if you are replying to recruiters or not, right? Because it's a damn search engine and they can control the platform. So. Let's say you got 10 uh, rep um, offers or like people just text you and say, hey, long, I'm, uh, I saw you use Python, blah, 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 blah. And are you interested in your job? And you don't reply to them. Then their algorithm will just flag you and know, oh man, this guy didn't reply to the last 20 uh, offers. Then um, I will take him out of this group of the, uh, the ones which actually uh, should get more reach in or on LinkedIn, right? So that's why even if you're not interested, go and say, hey, um, Andrea, thank you so much for this offer, but this is not the um, role which I'm looking for, but I really appreciate it. And maybe they have another role and they come back to you and they offer that one for you and then it would work. So always reply. It doesn't matter who that is, always reply. So it increases your response Uh, metric in in your backend profile which you don't see yourself but if you are into data analytics you can tell that this uh, metric exists it's the same like on netflix like netflix knows which videos or not videos like which movies you watched how long you watched a specific sequence of this movie and how long you or how often you repeated that one so it knows, oh, this part is, is full of action or uh, women or kids or uh, fun. Then they recommend you or take it as a, a metric to recommend you other movies which have the same metric or same pattern in their movies, you know? So data analytics. So I hope that answers your question, Julio. Next one, should I do research on the company recruiters that contacted me? or just take them for the word. Wait, I forgot another one. How should you conduct yourself with recruiters? What does it mean, conduct yourself with recruiters, Blazer? Can you say it and paraphrase it? How to behave? Oh, thank you, Tanek. Um, oh, wait, I have to open here. So, conduct with, uh, with um, recruiters. How to behave? Yeah, of course, uh, you should be very, um, like, you should be yourself, and very um, authentic and serious. But recruiters are amazing people. So they are like human resource um, people because they're very kind, they're very fun, and uh, the personality is, uh, is um, different depending on the person, of course. But uh, it's, it, it can be very casual as well, but then they get to, this, to the business and then um, you can just talk to them um, casually, but it depends on how they talk to you. But most of them, they will say, um, uh, in German, you say um, Dutzen, so they will talk to you informally instead of very formal, but some people do that. Um, also, um, 
yeah, it can be very, very fun, like talking to, I don't know, people for you, who you meet on the campus while studying. <laughs> so that's what you should do. And also don't be nervous because they are not testing your knowledge. They are just asking if you really did what you said you are doing or what you have written on your profile. So just, just, just check that in. And the next step, that's the, 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 the harder part, like the real recruiter of the company or like a, the human resource or tech or CTO or team lead, they, they will test your knowledge. But then of course, it depends on the company and if how they are like, and then uh, you will see how that is. But um, yeah, don't, don't change your personality. I mean, it, of course you can be, uh, you have some kind of anxiety and all this stuff, but I mean, it's a question of your own um, self-control as well, you know, and all, uh, also your own personality. So if, if you are, uh, have anxiety, it's totally normal. If you, if you have a date with a crush or something, you know, of course you are, you're nervous and all this stuff, right? So it's totally normal. But if the recruiter is good, he will make you feel very comfortable, nice and fun. Okay. I hope that um, answers your question. Um, then... Should I do research on the company recruiters that contacted me or just take them for the word? Um, there's also an interesting question, actually. Uh, so I would say um, definitely check out the company and the recruiter who is reaching out to you because um, you can tell if a recruiter uh, is very inexperienced or not based on uh, how they react or based on what kind of... Um, profile they have like you can go on their linkedin and see uh, how long have they been working as a recruiter and all that stuff and uh, how many connections they have so there are many metrics which you can check out uh, and see if they actually are serious but most of them are because who wants to waste your time except if you are a troll on twitch right so i hope that uh, answers your question as well and also um if the, um, a recruiter is reaching out to you most of the time they won't come to you and say oh Listen, Blazer, the company uh, Zalando is looking for a new, um, I don't know, uh, mobile app developer. Because they don't want you to go out and then apply to them, of course. Because, they, because if they reach out to you, you know you are the right fit, right? Or you could be the right fit. You have a high um, probability. Then you could go out to them yourself and then they don't get commission, for example, you know? But if you get past this first stage, they will tell you in the app, uh, what is it called, the second email, hey, so this is the briefing of the company, this is your salary maybe, and this is your, those are your benefits, and then uh, you will also, they will, um, how do you say it, reveal the company name. But most of the case, uh, good recruiters also tell you upfront what the salary is, because I hate it when I have to reply to somebody and I don't even know what, what is waiting for me, you know? That's why, um, that's also another sign how, how you can tell if it's a good recruiter um, based on their pitch in your email or in your DM. Like, if, if it's something uh, which they could have written to anybody, he's a bad recruiter. Because I had people who actually reached out to me and said, hey, Long, I saw your Twitch channel, I saw your Instagram, it looked amazing and I think you also have high credibility in Python, that's why I'm reaching out to you. And I'm like, man, this guy, he, he stalked me, man, <laughs> he wants me. Because you know, imagine a recruiter sitting there on his laptop, I don't know where, on the beach, I don't care. And he's like, yeah, let's, let's look for a new person. And he finds somebody, he's like, oh, wow, what is he doing? And he's looking on the socials, blah, 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 blah. He's wasting. He's wasting time if he wouldn't be serious about that, right? That's why if somebody is texting you and say, hey, Johnny, I saw you're using Python and I also saw your GitHub account and I saw you're working on this project, man, this guy dicked you, man. He could be your simp. That's why he is very, very serious about that, okay? So that's another sign of that. And if they copy a template and at the top it says, when they reach out to me, hello, Daniel. <laughs> you already can tell, man, this guy, <laughs> he's just copy-pasting, man. He's like, uh, what is it called? 
uh, spray and pray, man. Spray and pray. <laughs> that's why that's the, the, the thing. So um, I hope that also re uh, answers your question, Blazer. Also, go to Glassdoor, which is the platform where you can see and compare salaries. I mean, you have to make or write a company review or something, and then you get access to all the, the salaries of a company, and then you can tell if uh, it's actually real or not as well. Glassdoor, okay? So that's it. Uh, do we still have any other questions? Uh, Tanek said it means how to behave, okay, and how to communicate, okay. Be formal, first of all. Don't be fucking uptight and that guy, girl, that changes the behavior when dealing with this kind of situation, okay. It's almost the same if you're dating a girl and you suddenly behave differently. Yes, exactly. Use this. Yeah. All right, guys. So, that's it, actually. I don't have anything else to tell you i hope that helped you somehow and um yeah if you want some uh, hands-on optimization or let's say you optimize it already just send me your link i will check it out and see if it actually works out because i think the most tricky part here is um to write about yourself and the impact you created on the company you know because just saying uh i created five mobile apps is no impact um, but saying I created um, five packages which improved the um, work time of my uh, colleagues by 50% is impact as a mobile app developer you know and don't limit yourself to the job title just because you apply for a flutter development role or something doesn't mean you only have to say something which is relevant to the flutter role also you are a programmer, so you can do anything, right? Because I don't use Python only. I can also use JavaScript, PHP, C, C++, all that stuff, or even Java. But yeah, don't limit yourself. But that's it for today, guys. Thank you for joining. I hope that helped. And uh, DM me if you like, or just leave a comment down below. Thank you for joining. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And see you in the next episode, guys. Peace. My Bitcoin.